Good morning, everyone. Today is a sponsored video. Today's sponsor is actually Varmillo. They are a keyboard company. So yes, we are going to be talking about keyboards today. But in order to showcase everything, I do have to change camera angle. So uh, I'm currently using my iPhone through a top down view to let you guys experience the unboxing experience just like I have. So the very first thing we're going to be doing is, of course, we're going to open the box and we're going to be greeted with the beautiful keyboard as well as a dust cover. But then we have the beautiful keyboard over here. Now, normally it is wrapped up over here. As you can see, there is the this little plastic wrap but uh, I opened it already so we're gonna move that to the side and place the beautiful keyboard here now other than the keyboard we are of course greeted with a uh, keycap puller over here so this is for removing the keycaps over here and this is a switch puller because uh, this keyboard is actually hot swappable which means you can actually switch out the switches for my friends which are a little bit confused and being like what the hell are switches basically you've got keycaps over here so that's what you see on top and then under the keycap you've actually got these things called switches so this is the thing that you actually push down in order to let your computer know that oh this key has been pressed so what this keyboard as well as many custom keyboards can actually do is you have the switch puller over here you go like this and you're able to actually remove the physical switch as you can see right here this is actually an mx ergo clear it's a very nice uh, tactile switch but as you can see i was able to remove it directly from the pcb or the actual uh the brains of the keyboard basically all right so you're able to switch out all of the switches in case you don't really like these switches. And let's say that you want something else, you're able to switch it. And then we just push it back in and then we take our keycap and we can push that back in as well. And boom, we are good to go. Now, other than the keycap puller, as well as the switch puller, we are also greeted with a cable over here. Let us open up our cable right here. And this is a USB type C to a USB A type cable, since this keyboard is USB type C. Now this keyboard also supports wired mode, Bluetooth, as well as 2.4 gigahertz. Now I do need to find the dongle. I have no idea where they hid the dongle. It's uh, somewhere in the case, I'm assuming. All right, friends, so I literally went through the entire keyboard. I was thinking that the dongle was probably like hidden in a compartment under here or something along those lines, but that wasn't the case. The dongle was right here. It was literally in the box where the cable as well as the keycap puller was. It was just such a small thing, it slides around in the box. So um, yeah, just don't make that same mistake. Luckily, I did not throw the box out yet. Now the dongle itself doesn't have any branding or anything, it's just a little black dongle. So uh, yeah, you might need to use a marker or something to let yourself know what this is actually for because, uh, well, it doesn't signify that it is actually from Varmillo. And um, I don't think there is a storage place on the keyboard as well for your little dongle. Normally, a lot of these custom keyboards usually have like a compartment like under here or something that you can slot in your little dongle to carry it with your keyboard. But unfortunately, this one does not. So uh, just make sure that you don't actually lose this. Another thing that I almost forgot to talk about is what exactly is this keyboard? This is the Varmillo Mini Low 75%. Now I do have the retro edition. I am using the Cherry MX Ergo Clear. However, they also sent me the Kale Prestige Silent, which I'm going to be switching out later so that you can have a sound comparison between the two. And mine is the Tri-Mode Hot Swappable as well as RGB. And the total cost is 143 US dollars. Now, if you did buy any of these Varmillo keyboards, they are a joy to use. However, you probably have experienced the same thing that I've experienced where you have no idea how to actually use the keyboard. Like, like the function keys in order to turn off the RGB, in order to turn down the brightness, change the colorways, all of that stuff. Well, you're gonna notice in the box, they give you this little card, but it doesn't actually give you that many instructions on like how to actually turn off the RGB. It tells you, oh, there are like some special function, media function, stuff like that, but nothing about you know, turning off the RGB. That's the main thing that I wanted to do because I use my keyboard wirelessly and this keyboard does have a decent battery size of 3000 milliamps, which is pretty good, but I just turn off the RGB so that it can last longer because I don't like charging my keyboard all the time. So where do you find the instructions? Well, in order to find their instructions, you have to go to their website over here and go to support. Once you get to the support page over here, you have to type in the model number. In order to find your model number, it is super easy. All you're gonna do is simply flip over your keyboard. And once you flip over your keyboard, right here is gonna have your model number and you're simply just gonna type that in. So my model number was VXT81. 
and boom, over here we'll have the Minilo VXT81 Tri Mode RGB manual, which you can download. And if we scroll all the way down here to the lighting effects, it says right here, turn on and off the RGB. You hold down function plus X to turn on or off the backlighting. So that is exactly what I did. Now, something to keep note of is after you've turned off the RGB over here, you'll notice that the logo over here or the Varmillo logo is still going to be lit up. And as you can see here, in order to turn off the logo backlight, you actually need to press function, alt, and arrow up to increase the brightness and arrow down to decrease the brightness. So let me show you that right now. As you can see, the logo is lit up. We're gonna hold function, alt, and then arrow down. And as you can see, now it is totally off. So now we have the maximum amount of battery because we don't need any of the RGB or any of the lighting. And um, yeah, now I can use it wirelessly, perfectly fine with the maximum amount of battery life. I heard that these keyboards can actually last for several months without any charging, especially if you turn off all of the RGB. So I am looking forward to testing that um, because, well, you know, obviously I can't test it now. There's no way for me to drain the battery as fast as possible. Um, but nevertheless, it is pretty awesome. I am a little bit disappointed about the dongle though. The dongle having no storage place on the keyboard is kind of a big deal for me. I think that is a little bit unfortunate. However, some of you guys may be asking, Carol, how are you using the keyboard right now? And it's actually through Bluetooth. As you can see, I currently have the Bluetooth mode on and it was actually very easy. I simply switched on to Bluetooth. I went over here to nearby devices and it immediately popped up and I was able to connect to the Varmillo VS-1 and um, yeah, it just immediately started working, which is really awesome. Now, another basic function I want to showcase over here are, of course, the feet. So there are like the four degree feet or something, and then there's the seven degree feet. I always go for the big feet over here because I do like my keyboard elevated or at least in a slant so that I can just rest my wrists over here without having to use a wrist rest and just type normally. But with all that said and done, let's have the actual sound test. I know a lot of you guys care about how the keyboard sounds and nothing else. So uh, here we go. And there we go, we were using monkey type over here. Now I did type relatively slow at 89 words per minute because in order to catch the camera angle of the keyboard, you know, excuses, excuses, blah, blah, blah. Basically, yes, I type very slow. Um, but other than that, I do like the sound and the feel of these MX Ergo clears. They are tactile switches, so there's a clear bump when you push them down, which is very good for me because personally, I need that bump or else I just end up bottoming out the key and just typing really, really heavily. And then after like a couple hours, I actually hurt my fingers because I don't know when the key is actually actuated or activated. And that's why having these tactile switches is a big deal for me because uh, it just lets me know there's that feedback saying that, hey, you push the button, you don't need to push it any further. And that's why I really like these. Now, another thing I really like about these switches is of course the sound itself. It kind of sounds like bubble wrap to me whenever I'm typing, it feels like bubble wrap as well. You know that feeling when you pop the bubble wrap, it just feels like that for every single key you're pressing. So it's really, really comfortable and it's quite a joy to press every single key because I really enjoy popping bubble wrap and this just feels the same thing. It just feels exactly the same. So it, that's really, really nice. But we do need to change all our switches because Varmillo did send us the Kale Prestige silent switches over here. So the silent switches are, as the name implies, silent. So we are going to be comparing the silent ones with, of course, the MX Ergos. Now, the Ergos obviously are going to be a lot louder since they are tactile switches. These are linear switches and these are designed to be silent. Now, the reason why I wanted these switches is simply because if I ever bring this to the office or when I'm typing around other people, the silent switches are going to be a lot nicer versus these. You know, these are are okay they're not like super clickety clackety but I'm very self-conscious whenever I'm typing around other people so that's why I opted for these silent switches 
So now is the absolutely crazy part where we get to pull out all of our keycaps as well as our switches. Now, as you can see over here, I pulled out the switch along with the keycap. Uh, for some reason, I feel like the keycaps are put really tightly onto the switches, which is why every time I pull out the key, it seems like the switch comes out with it. But nevertheless, I'm gonna use some movie magic and I'm gonna be switching out all of these switches in a second now. And voila, there we go. We finally removed all of the keycaps, as you can see over here. Pro tip, you wanna keep them in the same order so that's easier to put them back in, at least for me, because I don't remember where all the keys go. As you may notice over here, um, a lot of the actual switches came out with the key when I pulled out the keycaps. I don't know why Vermillo did this, but uh, they put the keycap really, really tight onto these uh, switches. So when I pulled out the keycap, the switch came out with it. So next step is to actually remove all of the actual switches. So uh, we are going to be using this end. This part is actually very simple. All you need to do is get the tool over here and squeeze the top part as well as the bottom part. And once you do that, it's just going to pop off super easily, just like that. Very nice. All right. So something I learned about this tool itself is when you're using it to pull out the keycaps, after you encase it, you actually twist it a little bit so that it gets under the keycap and then you pull it out. What I've been using before is these little crappy plastic ones. This is the one that Razer gave me like ages ago, and I'm just used to these but uh, this makes your life so much easier. You gotta use a lot less force, unless of course the keycap was stuck onto the switch where a lot of the keys were like that and I had to pull pretty hard to get them out because I had to pull out the switch as well as the keycap. But with that being said, I'm gonna be pulling out all of these switches over here and we're gonna be switching them to the Kale Silent ones. And whew, there we go. We have finally removed everything. This is what a bare bones kit would look like or at least a hot swappable one where you just have, you know, the board itself. So you can just stick in your own switches, whatever switch you want, you stab those in, and then you get whatever keycaps you want, you stab those in, and you're good to go. So um, basically, as you can see in this bag, we're gonna be filling all of these into this keyboard, and um, yeah, that's gonna take a while. So again, I'll catch you guys probably in like an hour or so, because I also might wanna put O-rings on these. I wonder if I can actually put O-rings on them. We'll see. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit. So for those who are wondering how this works, each switch has these little pins at the bottom. You see there's two pins. I know it's out of focus, but uh, basically you want those two pins to be on the bottom right corner of every switch. So right here, then you just simply push it down and boom, done. Now it's stuck in and you want to do the same thing again. You can see there's two pins right here. You want to make sure the pins are on the right side or the bottom right corner. Go like that and you just push it down and voila. So it does make that little cluck sound, just locking it in and uh, you're good to go. Now, something you do need to be careful about is because it does take a little bit of force to push them in and you wanna make sure that you don't bend these pins. Now, if you do bend them by accident because you like squash them the wrong direction, let's say that instead of the bottom right, you accidentally put it on like the top left or something and you just like brute forced it, don't worry, you can always just bend these pins back. They're really easy to just bend back and you're good to go. So it's not like you broke the switch, okay? A great example of bent pins is this one. This came in the bag and you can see already how bent one of those pins are. It's not straight, it's very crooked. So all you need to do is you simply just take it out, you push it straight a little bit and voila, now it is straight and it's ready to go into the, uh, into the keyboard, all right? So all you gotta do is you just simply push it a little bit and you just bend it back so that it is straight and you're good to go. So, you know, again, don't need to panic too much. It's relatively simple. You just need a lot of patience because, uh, yeah, doing all this keyboard stuff for the very first time does take quite a bit of time, but trust me, it'll be worth it after it's all done. Now, whew, there we go. We have finally installed all of our switches. These switches are linear switches, so there is no tactile bump, so I don't actually know when I've actuated them. So that is a little bit of a bummer, but they are so quiet. Look at this. I'm smashing down on these keys and there's no sound. It's actually incredible. But anyway, before I put on all the keycaps, we are gonna need to test if there are any faulty switches first. So uh, in order to do that, I'm simply just gonna turn on the Bluetooth mode over here. So we just click that on right there, boom. And once we are here, we're just simply gonna open up the notepad or whatever you want. And then you just go through every single key and just make sure that it actually works. So, so far backspace is working, delete is working. We go there, Q, W, E, R. Well, that was a double tap, I believe. Yep, T. Oh, so our Y key is not working. 
And yes, you can see on my Y key, I totally bent one of these pins. As you can see, it's just flat now. So we are gonna have to bend this one back up. So it's super simple. You can simply use your cap puller if you want and just bend that up a bit. Really push it up. Then we can use our fingers right here and we just bend it back in place so that it's nice and straight. All right, that's good enough. And then we can just plop it back in. So here we go again and let's go. Let's just make sure it's the right orientation and bam. So again, we go back to our notepad and let's press Y. Yeah, yep, Y works. You do, do, do. And there we go. We just tested every single switch and they all work perfectly fine. So now we can actually put the keycaps back on. So uh, as you can see over here, the design of these switches are a little bit different. The Ergo Clears, as you can see, they just have like a little stem over here. They've got like a little cross. But if you look at these over here, the silent switches, they actually have like a little circle around it to give it a little bit more stability. Let me see, I think this angle gives you the best view. It just gives you that extra little stability so that there's less wobble on the key itself. So you can see this is what the keycap looks like. We're simply just gonna place it on top like this. Now I do need to turn off the Bluetooth because I don't wanna randomly start pushing random buttons while I'm recording. But as you can see here, we're simply just gonna push it down and we're good to go. You don't need to go anything crazy. I know a lot of people like to push it down and then smash the crap out of the key after a while, but um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, yeah, this actually feels pretty good. I was considering whether I should install O-rings onto the key, but I don't think that's required. It sounds really quiet and it feels really good too. So uh, I'm actually gonna install the keycaps now. I'm gonna install the rest of the keycaps and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in a bit. And there we go, friends. We have replaced all of the MX Ergo Clears, which are these uh, tactile switches, into these Kale Silent switches. And I'm gonna give you guys a sound test right now. So we kind of hit a problem. It's not a bad problem, but these keys are barely audible. Like I have to smash the keyboard where the sound is actually coming from my fingers hitting the back plate instead of actually like just typing on the keyboard. Like if you just press the keys normally, my mic's not picking up anything. Nothing. Oh, okay, it picks up something now. Now when I'm smashing it really hard, but there's barely anything. It's kind of crazy. I, I don't know, maybe I need to boost up the gain or something, but I'm gonna place the microphone really close to the keyboard. So you can see right here that the microphone is literally like two fingers width away from the keyboard, okay? And I'm just gonna type, I'm gonna use monkey test or monkey type or whatever, and you let me know if you can hear anything. And there we go, via monkey type, 84 words per minute, accuracy 96%. Again, you know, I'm not the fastest typer, so unfortunately, you know, only 84 words per minute. But nevertheless, I could barely hear the keyboard. The only time that I actually heard the keyboard was because I bottomed out a key and that vibration went to the table itself. Or when I hit the backspace, I feel like those were probably the only times that you might have heard something. But these silent switches are crazy, crazy quiet. They are so much more quiet compared to the Ergo Clears. But then again, the Ergo Clears are tactile switch. You know, they're not meant to be silent. While these Kale silent switches are designed to be silent, it just baffles me on how quiet they are. 
And um, yeah, you know, I'm going to put a side by side comparison right now or an AB comparison of the Ergo Clears versus the Silence. And you can just listen to the difference, but it's pretty baffling and it's pretty crazy in my opinion. Now, for those who are interested in this keyboard, there are different themes. There's a pink one over here. There's like a bluish green one. There's the blue one. And then there's, of course, the retro one, which is the one that I'm using. Now, the availability of these switches do vary pretty often. They refresh like basically every hour. So just make sure to keep checking the website if you are interested in a very specific switch. The tactile switch that I used earlier was the Cherry MX Ergo Clear. And then the silent one is the Kale Prestige Silent. I highly recommend the silent switches if you are in like an office environment they are super super quiet it's actually pr pretty scary on how quiet they are and then the one that i'm using is the tri mode and hot swappable with rgb however you can also get the dual mode with white backlight only if you don't care about the dongle and you don't need the 2.4 gigahertz and you just use bluetooth now for those who want a little bit more information the cherry mx ergo clear does have a 35 gram force actuation versus the Prestige Silence, which has 42 grams of actuation force. So basically you need to put a little bit more force for the Prestige Silent in order to activate the switch versus the Cherry MX Ergo Clear. But again, if you are going for pure silence and that's the thing that you really care about, the Prestige Silence is very, very good at doing that. Now, Vermillo does have its own switches as well. As you can see, there's a Violet switch, a Sakura switch, as well as a Silent Daisy. The Silent Daisy actually only requires 35 grams of actuation force versus the Kale Prestige Silence. So if you are looking for a very light switch or a very easy switch to activate, but you still want a silent keyboard, you could consider the Silent Daisy over the Kale Prestige Silent switches. Now, for those who are wondering whether it's worth installing O-rings or not, personally, I don't think it's worth it simply because the main purpose of installing O-rings, at least for me, was to lessen the sound. But these switches are incredibly quiet already, so there's no real reason to install O-rings. Sure, if you do install it, they do get even more quieter, but you really need to put your ear next to it like this in order to hear the difference. The O-rings do make a difference. It is quieter, but... Like, you know, most people aren't going to be putting their ear next to their keyboard and tapping like that, right? So honestly, I don't think it's necessary to install the O-rings at all. By installing the O-rings, it does change the feel of the key as well. There's less bounce, which is uh, something that I do like about this keyboard is there is a lot of bounce. So when you do bottom out the key, it doesn't hurt your fingers. I used to use the MX keys as well as the MX mechanicals, and I bottom out a lot on those. And since I was constantly bottoming out, after like, you know, three, four hours, the tips of my fingers would get a little bit sore simply because I'm using so much force on it. And that's why I do like tactile switches a little bit more simply because it lets me feel the fact that I've actuated or activated a certain switch or I've pushed a button. I'm like, okay, I don't need to push it all the way to the very bottom. But I do understand there is a lot of appeal for linear switches, especially the silent linear switches, because like, this is amazing. This is so amazing. Being able to type in the office, you're getting the mechanical keyboard feel, but you're not disturbing anyone because of how quiet your keyboard is. And listen to this, listen to the space bar. I am hammering the space bar super hard right now. You can see my finger is red. It's literally red because of how hard I was pushing that space bar. So in conclusion, do I recommend this keyboard? Hell yeah, of course I recommend it. Like if you are gonna be using this in an office environment, it's freaking amazing. Even if you wanna use this for gaming. So if you're playing any competitive video game that requires really low latency, I would probably just use this wired or use the Bluetooth. 
The Bluetooth maybe if you're a little bit more casual, to be honest, um, because, you know, if you're going for the best and you're going for like hyper competitive games, you definitely want to just keep it wired and it's going to be perfectly fine. But if you're like me and you play like MMOs and you're really casual on like Overwatch or on Valorant, the Bluetooth will work perfectly fine. Just make sure that your computer has a good Bluetooth wireless chip in it because this keyboard does support Bluetooth 5.0 and I felt like uh, it was just a lot faster than the 2.4 gigahertz. I don't want to say it's a lot faster, but I, I felt a delay when I used the dongle versus when I just used Bluetooth. Bluetooth felt a lot better, a lot nicer to type on, uh, a lot more responsive, basically. So if you're a casual player like myself, Bluetooth is good enough. However, if you are going hyper competitive, then just use a wire. It's going to make your life a lot easier. And you don't need to recharge the battery if you're using wired anyway. But nevertheless, I am very happy with this keyboard, more than happy to recommend it. There will be a link in the description below to direct you to their website. It's not an affiliate link. I don't get a cut. I don't get anything from this. They literally just sent me this keyboard saying like, hey, would you like to do a review on it? And I was like, sure, why not? And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm actually going to be keeping this keyboard because because it feels really good and I really like the silent switches as much as I do like tactile switches but these silent switches just they're just so quiet it's it's amazing it's really impressed me on how quiet they are now something I forgot to mention is they actually do give you extra keycaps so if you don't like the orange escape key or the orange enter key or maybe you want to change the spacebar to orange you can do so as well because I know some people want something a little bit low key. They don't want all of these accent keys over here. So uh, you can definitely just install these over here. These are just the regular black keycaps. So it'll be ultra clean with just white and black. However, if you do like the orange, you can always change the spacebar to an orange one if you want to do that. Now, for those who are looking for the FAQ on like how to turn off the RGB lighting and all of that, I will leave the link to that in the description below as well, because I know in the box, it doesn't really explain anything. So um, yeah, just read the FAQ on their website. It kind of explains everything, all the different functions the keyboard has, how to switch between Bluetooth devices and all of that jazz. All right. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. I want to thank Formillo for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.